Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at something a lot of you were curious about, the new Google Wi-Fi. This is a router and wireless mesh network that is designed to make your life a lot easier if you've been having trouble with networking uh, in your home, specifically trying to get rid of a lot of those dead zones that you might have around your house. And it consists of a bunch of these little cylinders that you set up in different portions of your home uh, that will hopefully get rid of your problem. And we're going to take a look and see how well it might do that in just a second. However, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge from Google. In fact, they sent us a three pack of these things. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. We're gonna hang on to this for a little while because I am sure there will be updates that we will cover on this over the course of the year. So uh, stay tuned, we'll probably have a lot more to come on this. So let's take a look at the hardware now. There isn't much to see on this device actually. It's just a little white plastic cylinder, kind of similar to uh, the Google Home in some ways. You've got a status light here here in the middle that can be turned off. So if you have it in a bedroom or something, you can uh, switch that light out. Uh, there isn't much in the way of wired connectivity. In fact, you only have one free ethernet jack if you are using this as a router. So on this side here, you plug your internet in. Over here, you could plug in a computer or a game console or something, but that's it. Just a single uh, ethernet port on this one. Uh, you've got a USB type C connector here down below for connecting up power to it. Now, if you have a Google OnHub router, uh, which is the Google router that came out of about a year and a half ago, uh, this will work with it. So if you have that router on your network and you plug this in, it will configure itself as a mesh point, kind of a wireless extender uh, to that Google OnHub router. So you don't have to throw out the old one uh, to buy the new one here, which was really nice to see. In fact, they use the same exact app and everything you do to configure this device is exactly the same as you do uh, on the OnHub device. So really cool to see that you can uh, use the old stuff with the new stuff here, which was good. So you can buy this as a single unit uh, for $129. And if you are an OnHub user, I would suggest doing that first to see if one unit uh, might give you enough wireless connectivity to solve whatever coverage issues you're having in your home. They also sell a three pack and that sells for $299. So you get a little bit of a discount on each of them. And the three pack gives you three identical units so they can all work as a router. Uh, so if you only needed two of these things, uh, you can give the third one to a family member or sell it to them for a hundred bucks because they'll save $29 and uh, you both end up ahead on it. So unfortunately there is no uh, two unit version available. Now I found configuration of the device to be very simple. You just download an app for your phone. It works with the iPhone as well as with the Android phones. Uh, what's cool is that the initial configuration is done via Bluetooth. So if you get the three pack, for example, uh, you take one of the units out of the box, it doesn't matter which one it is, uh, plug it in, connect it to the internet, your phone will find it and then it will make it the router and then the other devices that you connect after that uh, become the mesh points. And it all was pretty seamless actually as I got everything up and running. Now, on the mesh devices, they do recommend that you put them uh, about a room or two apart from each other. So just to give you an example as to how I have things set up in my home right now, I've got one on the bedroom uh, side of the house all the way over there. I've got another one in the kitchen, which is right above me uh, in the basement here. And then I have this one in the basement. So what's happening right now in my network is that uh, this device here is connecting to the kitchen and the, the kitchen is then going to relay all the traffic over to the bedroom, which is where I put the main unit. And before I get into the rest of the configuration, I'll just show you what uh, the meshing looks like here. So what you'll have on your uh, app here is a, a little guide to how uh, good or so or not so good the connection is back to the base station there. So you can see the bedroom unit is the primary Wi-Fi unit. I've got a fair connection right now on the basement, so I might want to move it maybe more into the center of the basement, which is more directly underneath the uh, unit that's upstairs. You might want to experiment a little bit in finding the best spot to put everything to get the best connection speeds possible here. And I'll do a network check again, and that will uh, update things as I am moving things around. So let's take a little bit of time initially just to try to figure out uh, the best spot for everything. Unfortunately, there isn't really a good indicator on the unit itself to give you a real-time uh, ability to see what the connectivity is like. But I think this is one of those things that once you get everything up and running, uh, you'll be done with it. Uh, but your first couple of hours with it might take a little bit of experimenting to try to find the best possible connections to your devices. Now you'll note before I mentioned there was only one available ethernet port on the device you configure as a router. On the extenders, you have
have two Ethernet ports because uh, you're not using that WAN port for uh, routing. You can actually use it as a local LAN port. So if you have, for example, a, a Xbox or a PlayStation in a, a game room and you've got one of these extenders in there, uh, you can plug the Xbox or PlayStation into these Ethernet ports here and have that traffic delivered back to your main router wirelessly through this mesh network. So these act as little uh, wireless bridge units in addition to being wireless extenders. So let's take a look now at the app that you use to configure and maintain your network. And the first thing it will do is pop up a card to give you a status update. And right now it looks like everything is fine and working properly. But if I uh, pull the plug on this uh, access point down here, it'll tell me that one of them is disconnected. So I know to go and fix it. So you do get uh, some good notifications there. Uh, below that is a card with some pointers as to how to turn down the brightness on one of my uh, hub devices here. If I click on that, you can uh, get the full step-by-step uh, -step instruction set here. What's cool about this feature is that uh, if there are things you haven't yet configured on your system, like in my case, the guest network initially, it put up a card that said, hey, you haven't configured your guest network, here's how you do it, which was really nice to get those instructions for something that I hadn't yet done. Uh, and it went away after I got those things working. So kind of an intelligent way to uh, onboard you onto the product here, which was nice to see. Uh, below that is an option for adding managers. And uh, what you can do is designate people by their Google account uh, and give them access to this device to configure it or troubleshoot it remotely. Now that may or may not be a good thing if you're not comfortable with that, but uh, normally I wouldn't be myself, but it's Google and I'm a little more confident in Google's ability to keep these devices locked down and secure. Uh, so you can set up somebody who has access remotely to do things to your network if you wish. Uh, you by default have remote access to this as well. So you can pop in uh, when you're away, you could disable your kid's internet access or something if you're on a business trip or uh, allow others to be able to do that also. So a good example of that would be if maybe I bought this for my mother and she's having some network trouble, I could go in and troubleshoot the network for her, which is kind of helpful. On the middle screen here, you've got your uh, network status, status update. So I can go in here to my internet connection and uh, see what my speeds are looking like. You can run speed tests and it'll give you a, uh, uh, basically a log of all the speed tests that you have run here. You also get a real-time overview of what your current network usage is looking like as well. So if you are having some slowdowns, you can try to see if it's something happening within your network or perhaps some problem with your uh, internet provider. You also get the same screen we saw earlier with the signal strength on all of your uh, access points there. Uh, below that is your uh, list of devices that are currently connected to your network and you can dig down deeper. So I could look at my uh, MacBook Pro and see what it is doing uh, uniquely uh, on the network. And I can also dig into the details here and see what its IP address is and some of the other uh, things going on with that device as well. And there's also some network configuration that you can do on your device here on the last screen. Uh, it starts here with a network check, so you can run some tests on your internet connection, your mesh, and uh, the connection to your individual device. You can also set priority devices here, so there is some traffic prioritization. So for example, if I was doing a live stream, I could set my MacBook Pro to be the priority device, so everything it is doing gets priority over perhaps what my daughter is trying to watch on Netflix or something like that. Uh, over there where it says kids, I have a pause button because uh, what I was able to do was group together a few devices and uh, with one push, I can knock all of my kids' stuff off the internet if I want, if they're not behaving themselves or whatever. Uh, you can configure that through the family Wi-Fi button you see down there. And what you can do here is set up different labels and uh, com come up with different groups of devices for uh, different things. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing. You can also pause devices individually. So if you've got, uh, you know, hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but if you have some device that is doing some uh, nasty malware or something, you can pause that device individually so it is no longer communicating uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, your guest Wi-Fi settings are down there, so you can uh, set that up and configure it. I did a, a little bit on this with the OnHub router and uh, the Philips Hue bulbs, which you can also control, by the way, from this system. And you can make certain things available uh, to the guest network. So you can take a look at that video. I'll put a link to it down below so you can get a feel for it. But if you have a printer that you want your guests to print to, but you don't want your guests on your main network, uh, you can have the printer work on both networks. It's kind of a neat thing that you can uh, set up within this guest network setting here. And then within the main network settings, you can go in and do some advanced networking. So for example, I can change the DNS. Uh, you do have the ability to uh, do some configuration of your WAN. Uh, there is port forwarding. So if you have a little server running somewhere, you can set up a few ports to forward. Uh, but there really isn't much here uh, that you can configure. It is a pretty basic system here. And it's by design really for security to not allow you to do things that might uh, create a security hole that you accidentally create 
right here. So this is really not a uh, enthusiast device. It is really a consumer driven device with some very basic networking controls that uh, do some very basic things. Now I've got my little Mac set up here because I've been running speed tests with this all day today to try to get a feel for what kind of performance we can expect out of the system. So uh, the first test I did was kind of a uh, pristine, perfect condition kind of test where I have a computer plugged into the main access point via ethernet and then I had this computer connect wirelessly. So I'm pushing data over the air to the access point and then out via the wire to the computer that was running uh, attached to it. And I was able to get speeds of about 500 megabits per second under perfect conditions where I'm only a couple of feet away and uh, right next to the main access point. Uh, later on, I took the same computer over to the kitchen uh, mesh unit to see what kind of speed degradation we would see. And uh, we went from getting about 500 megabits per second when we were right next to the access point uh, to gaining about 100 megabits per second or so when we're connecting through the mesh points. You do lose a little performance performance, actually a lot of performance, uh, by using the mesh access points, but uh, you are able to maintain, I think, a connection that's good enough for Netflix and some uh, movie watching. Uh, then I also took out a, a Windows PC and then connected it via Ethernet to the mesh point. So we were wired to the mesh point, going wirelessly back to the main unit, and then it went back to a wired connection to the computer over there. We got about 180 megabits per second or so, so a little bit better performance when you're able to connect via Ethernet uh, to the mesh point just to test that wireless bridging capability. Now we're in the basement and we're connecting via wireless to the uh, little uh, node here. And uh, this node is going to be sending data into the kitchen, which is then going to hop over to the bedroom and then push that data back out to that same computer that is sitting there uh, waiting for me to connect. So let's do a quick little test here and we'll see what kind of speeds we get. So I'm getting about 70 to 80 megabits per second with a connection that we saw that was uh, kind of in the uh, less than good category. So I think if I got this access point a little closer to the kitchen, uh, we might see better performance, but I expect about 100 megabits per second, give or take, uh, from your remote connections, which isn't bad, but you will lose some performance when you are connecting through one of these mesh units, and it's just the nature of how all this stuff works. I've seen very similar performance drop-offs with other similar systems that I have tested here on the channel, so it's to be expected, but uh, you can certainly stream a lot of video decently uh, with 100 megabits of bandwidth. You could probably get two or three people doing that at the same time, if not more, off of each of these mesh units. So I think you will be able to solve a lot of the wireless problems that you might be having now. If you've got spots in your home that are completely dead, uh, this will fill them in and I think will be adequate for uh, most of what people on your uh, network will be doing with a phone or a tablet or something like that. Now, if you're curious as to what technology is at play here, this has a, a two by two AC radio. Uh, you can check out my video down below in the video description called AC 101 or Wireless 101, where I talk about how all this AC stuff works. This also works with older 2.4 gigahertz technology also. So if you have older devices, those will connect up just fine with these as well. And uh, the access point will figure out uh, what the best uh, connection strategy is for each device you're trying to connect to it. Uh, you can also add more than three of these things to your network if you want. So if you want to do four or five, you can certainly do that. Although I think you hit a point where having too many of these mesh things going on uh, will significantly degrade performance, but four or five might be fine. Uh, three is definitely workable as I've been seeing here in my house. So overall, I think it's a pretty good little system here. Very easy to set up. I do like the fact that uh, Google kind of takes all the configuration and maintenance out of your hands and does it for you. Uh, I think that's good for consumers who are uh, reluctant or just not always taking a look at their wireless con or networking control panel to make sure everything is up to date. So I like the fact that they do that. I think if you are a power user or a real networking geek, this is not the product for you. There's a lot of other options out there. I'll put some links down below in the video description. But uh, for consumers, I think this is a very safe choice and a, a pretty solid system system here out of the box. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.